It's super obnoxious. <laughs> Oh man, Instant Pot, why? Why can't you ever get it all completely right? In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the new Instant Pot Pro. This is a model that just came out that is the top of the line Instant Pot at the moment. I got the eight quart version. There is also a six quart version. And from what I can see, it looks pretty sleek. I'm excited to take it out of the box and give it a try. I'm gonna be comparing this new Instant Pot Pro to some basic Instant Pot models and the features on like the duos. So those of you looking to upgrade from a more basic model can get an idea if it's worth the money for you. Also, I know that there are a lot of people that might be interested in the differences between this new Instant Pot Pro and the little bit older Duo Evo Plus. It looks like there's a lot of similarities between those two models. So in a separate video, I will be comparing those two models specifically. Here's a quick spin of the box and what it looks like. On the top, they have all of the different items that are in the box, so you can always check, make sure that if you think something's missing, you can check the list just to be sure. We've got the Instant Pot Pro Getting Started Guide. And right here on top, we have the extra red ceiling ring. This confuses a lot of people. This is an extra ring, and so there's one already installed in the lid. This is for later. If that one ever wears out, you can just save it until then. And let's get this thing out. Get all the packaging here so that we can really take a look at it. On this size and model, the cord is not removable. On some Instant Pots it is, and other Instant Pots it's not. So this one is not. Let's first take a look at the lid here. On the top, you can see it has a cover, a plastic cover over the steam release valve. And this is the steam release weight. And um, don't be concerned that it's wobbly. That's the way it's supposed to be. Some people get worried about that. And this is nice because it's just an extra barrier so that if something does start to spray, it doesn't just spray out the top, it kind of, this kind of stops it a little bit. It'll still make a mess, but hopefully it won't like spray up into your cabinets. This red thing right here is the pressure pin and it pops up to show when the Instant Pot is at pressure and it is held on here just with a little silicone cap on the back so you can take it out to clean it if needed. I will disassemble the lid um, a little bit later so you can see all the different pieces that come off. So I'll show you that again soon. This is the steam release switch. On this model, you can keep your fingers kind of farther away from the steam release. On some of the older ones, you had to turn the actual uh, weight over here with a little lever. But on this one, you can keep your hand away and it's super easy to just flip it to vent when you're ready to release the pressure in your pot. Another convenient thing about this pressure switch is that when you put the lid on your Instant Pot, when you turn it, it will switch it automatically to sealing. So you don't have to remember to put it on sealing. Um, you'll see that in a lot of Instant Pot recipes because the older models, you have to flip it to sealing uh, manually, but this one does it for you. So that's very convenient. On top of the lid, it has a removable grate. And this is for another accessory that you can buy um, to add on to this model. It's a tray that you're able to put ice into to help the Instant Pot come down from pressure naturally more quickly. So you can just switch it to venting if you want to release the pressure really fast, or you can let the Instant Pot sit until it re releases pressure naturally. And then the ice is just another option to help it release pressure naturally a little bit faster. And that is an accessory that I have not added to my Instant Pot and I have not tried it yet. Now onto the back of the lid. This is the silicone ring that is already in the lid and that is what this red one is a replacement for. So um, sometimes these rings will wear out. It can make the lid not seal correctly and that's when you would wanna use a new pressure ring. Another thing that the extra ring is good for is if you wanna have a dedicated ring for sweet foods and a dedicated ring for savory foods. Some people say that the tastes or smells from previous meals can get trapped in the ring, and so changing them out depending on what you're making can be a good idea. I've never had that to be a problem, so I just save my extra ring for when this one might wear out. 
This is a cap that's on the bottom of the pressure release valve, and that is just to help make sure that food doesn't get sucked in there and it get clogged up. You wouldn't want anything clogging the pressure release valve, and this little cap does come off for cleaning, so um, if it does get gunked up, which it happens occasionally, but not every time. I don't clean it every time I use my Instant Pot, but occasionally I will pull that off and make sure it's all clean and everything is clear. So now I'll just take off all the pieces of the lid that are removable, starting with the cap, and then the sealing ring comes all the way out like that, and that can be cleaned if it gets dirty. And then the pressure pin, you can see it uh, goes through the lid. So there's a silicone cap on the end here that just pops off. Make sure you don't lose this little cap because it will not come to pressure without it. And then once you remove the cap, the pin just falls through the hole on the lid. It looks like that. You wanna make sure that stays clean as well. And then the last things that are removable is the little plastic cap over the steam release and the weight, the steam release weight. And the whole lid is dishwasher safe so you can throw it into the dishwasher on the top rack um, all assembled, or you can disassemble it and wash it that way, but it is completely dishwasher safe. Now to put it all back together, start with the weight on there. Again, if it's wobbly, no big deal. Plastic cap goes right on top. The pressure pin drops right into that little hole. You gotta hold it with your finger to put the cap on or else it'll fall through. The cap just pops on like that. The little metal cap clips on here. And the last thing is just the ceiling ring. You just kind of have to feed it around the wire in here and just run your thumb around and get it to pop into place. And the lid is now reassembled. Inside the pot, we have the trivet. And this is just the same kind of trivet that you would get with uh, a different six or eight quart instant pot. That's what it looks like. It just has little feet here so you can put water underneath and have whatever you're cooking sitting on top. You use this for certain recipes where you're steaming something or you are doing pot and pot cooking where you'd have another little pot inside your big inner pot. Uh, anything where you want just water or just liquid underneath. Now for the inner pot, this model has my favorite kind of inner pot and that is the one with the handles. So it helps the inner pot not spin while you're sauteing in there, that's a huge thing. And then also it's super convenient because these inner pots can go onto the stove and just cook like a reg regular pot on the stove. So I have found that I just keep two of these, one in my cabinet and one in my instant pot. And these are all I use for uh, my pots on the stove as well as my inner pot and my instant pot, which just cuts down on all the things that I need to have in my kitchen. It does double duty. It has quart and liter markings, which is really convenient, as well as the half full line and then the max full line for when you're pressure cooking. Never use the Instant Pot without the stainless steel liner in place. You would never put food directly in to the inner pot without the liner. That is gonna ruin your Instant Pot real fast. So always make sure the stainless steel liner is in there. Back here on the back, I'll show you the condensation collector. It's already installed, so you don't have to do that. But um, it comes off like this, and you want to pull this off and clean it every once in a while. I find that it doesn't fill up very often, uh, but you don't want to just leave it because it can get a little bit of liquid in there and then get really gross. So make sure you pull that off periodically and just wash it, and then it just slides right back in here on the back of the Instant Pot. Now to get a close up on the controls, the buttons are pressure cook, rice grain, steam, saute, slow cook, sous vide, yogurt, and bake. And then this is a new feature that they have on this model where you can save your favorite cook times, the cook programs. Then of course they have the delay start button, the keep warm button, start button, and cancel. And this is a model with a knob, which isn't my favorite. I would prefer the up and down plus and minus buttons, but this one has the knob. The new feature on this model that I'm probably most excited about is the vent reminder feature. When you start a program and you get all the way down to 
the reminder here, you can have it off and that just cooks it like regular. You can set it to five minutes or you can set it to 10 minutes. And what that'll do is after the Instant Pot finishes cooking, it will wait either five minutes or 10 minutes and then it will notify you to remind you to release the pressure. Because on a lot of recipes, a lot of my recipes that I make especially, I say a five minute uh, natural pressure release before you do a quick release. So this is just adds a little bit of convenience where it will remind you after five minutes or 10 minutes to come and release the pressure. I think that is a pretty cool feature that they added. Now to try saving a favorite recipe using the favorites buttons here. I'm gonna do my six minute boiled eggs. I always cook them for six minutes and then do a quick release. So I'm gonna set up my whole cook program before I hit the favorite button. So I do it on pressure cook. Oh, they have egg on here as one of the options. Uh, where'd it go? There it is. And I always do six minutes on high pressure and then a reminder I don't do a reminder because or I just want the reminder off because I do a quick release so now I'm gonna hold down the favorites one button and that should save it there we go so now whenever I come in and hit my let's try it hit my favorites number one it comes up exactly how I saved it and I can just hit start while I'm here, I'll save my pasta cook time as well because that one's super easy. I usually just cook it for one minute and then um, when they have a pasta on here too. Oh look, they have it on one minute already. On high pressure, one minute. And for that one, I do a five minute uh, natural pressure release. So I will put the reminder on five minutes and then I will save it as my number two favorite recipe. There we go. Now I'm gonna do the initial test run or the water test that you find on page 11 of the Getting Started Guide. It's super simple. You just fill up the inner pot to the number one marking, either one liter or one quart. They're about the same. And then you cook it for five minutes on high pressure just to make sure it comes up to pressure correctly and it does everything it's supposed to do. Then you know you're good to go uh, and ready to start cooking. You can see these uh, fins on the lid can fit into the base of the Instant Pot on either side. So that makes it super convenient to keep the lid out of the way while you're cooking. Just adding water up to the number one line, which should be about four cups. Lock the lid. I'm hitting pressure cook. I'm gonna stay on custom. I want it on high pressure and I'm going to go down to five minutes and I don't need the reminder because I'm going to do a quick release as soon as the five minutes is finished and now I'm just hitting start. It says on and it is preheating and once it the pressure builds and the pin pops up it will switch over to the cooking time and that's when the five minutes will start counting down. Pressure pin just popped up, and that means the Instant Pot is up to pressure. And just in a few seconds, it will change over and show the five minute cook time. So cook time is finished. Now I'm gonna do a quick pressure release. And it's not as intimidating as it sounds. All you do is flip this switch from seal to vent, and the steam's gonna come out there until, and the steam will come out until the pressure pin drops down, then the lid will be unlocked and ready to open. So easy. Now the pin is down and my water test is complete and it was a success. Everything worked the way it was supposed to. One thing I noticed when I started using this Instant Pot model is that the sounds are super annoying. <laughs> and you'd think that Instant Pot would have figured out how to make the noises not quite so annoying, but this one seems worse than other models. It like has a long beep if you 
sometimes it's a long beep sometimes it's a little beep i don't understand it and then when you're trying to go up in time if i you know wanted to go up to like an hour or something it's super obnoxious <laughs> Oh man, Instant Pot, why? Why can't you ever get it all completely right? They've got so many cool features that they've added and they've upgraded, like these handles on the inner pot, amazing. Why can't they get the beep to not be so annoying? Sometimes it's a little beep like that, and then when you turn it for a while, it's just this high-pitched, really obnoxious beep. Wow. So anyways, I was looking in the manual to try to figure out how to turn off the sound because that is an option, which is great, but I could not find anywhere in the manual where it told me how to turn off the sound. The closest I found was this section down here where it shows what the icons mean. Sound is on, sounds are off, and then it says see control panel settings for more information. I looked through the whole book, I could not find control panel settings, maybe I'm just blind. But what I did was I went to my Duo Evo Plus manual, which is different, and it had the instructions for turning off the sound, and I tried it on here and it worked. So it's the same as the Duo Evo Plus. So what you do basically is when it's in the off position, you just hold down the dial for I think three to five seconds, and then it pops up here. You can change it from Fahrenheit to Celsius if you'd like but I want it to be Fahrenheit, and then you press the button to move over to the sound. Sound is on now, and I can turn sound to off, which is what I want. And then if I just hit start, I'll be at Fahrenheit and sound off. So that's a lot more convenient, just not super annoying. Now just to touch on the differences between this model and others in the Duo line, like the Duo Nova, the Duo Gourmet, different ones like that. The first and biggest upgrade is the Instant Pot Inner Pot with the handles. This is absolutely one of my favorite features and would be reason enough to get this model, in my opinion. I love that it doesn't spin while you're sauteing and while you're trying to stir in here, the pot stays in place. I love how you can easily lift it out without getting hot pads or anything like that. I love that it can go to the stove and can transfer from one to the other. I love that Instant Pot did an incredible job with that new feature and I hope that they add this to all of the Instant Pot models. It is 100% the main reason why I would recommend getting either the Duo Evo Plus or the Pro. Next upgrade is on the lid with the steam release. Um, this vent cover is nice. Like I said, it helps it not, you know, if something is going to spray out, it helps it not to make a huge mess. It kind of contains it a little bit. Um, I love the way that the steam releases from here. It's more like a soft cloud of steam rather than a big spray. So that's wonderful. I love that feature. The steam release switch is super convenient. It's so easy just to switch it um, from seal to vent. I have no complaints whatsoever about the steam release on here. I love the setup that they have used on this model. As far as the controls and the functionality, you're gonna be able to cook the same things in this kind of a pot as you would in a regular duo. The pressure cook high is the same PSI as the pressure cook high in the other Instant Pots and the pressure cook low, same level as in the other Instant Pots of the same size. Not all duos have a sous vide button. Some do, some don't. The Instant Pot Duo Gourmet has a sous vide. Yogurt is on nearly all of the Instant Pot models now, except for maybe the Lux. And then I have heard that the bake button can actually be used for dry baking like you would in an oven where you don't have to have water on the bottom of the pot to build pressure. I have not experimented with that but um, I'm interested in checking it out. I heard that that is a feature, so that that would be interesting if that was an option. That's definitely different than any of the other um, Duo models. And I should clarify that the Duo Evo Plus says Duo in the name, but it is nothing like any of the basic Duos, so it makes it super confusing, but when I say the basic Duo models, I'm not including the Duo Evo Plus that looks very similar to this Instant Pot Pro. For the saute setting on the basic duos, they have less normal and more settings for the temperature. On this model, they have a high 
and they have a custom and they have a low. So it goes low, high, custom, and then there's five levels that you can choose from in the custom settings. So I, I imagine this would be the same as high and maybe this would be the same as low and then you could get somewhere in between to get a medium. Another difference of note is that the steam button on this model is not a pressure cook setting. On the basic duos, it is a pressure cook setting and basically you could do pressure cook or steam and they would cook exactly the same way. But on this one, they have changed it to make steam a non-pressurized setting. So that's gonna cause a lot of confusion for people going from steam on the old models to steam on the new one. Instant Pot just always likes to change things up on us and you know keep us on our toes. Another added feature that I've already mentioned that's different from any of the um, basic duos is the reminder at five or 10 minutes to release the pressure. That is a cool feature that is brand new just to this Instant Pot Pro model. And then of course the last new feature is the favorites buttons. Um, these are not on the original duos, although there is a way to save your favorite cook times on the original duos. And I did a video on that not too long ago, so I will put that up in the cards and you can check that out if you wanna learn how to save cook times. In the next video, I'm gonna be showing the differences between this new Instant Pot Pro and the Instant Pot Duo Evo Plus. So if you're interested in those differences, be sure to click through and I will see you guys in the next video.